So you're tired of following along with tutorials, you've made enough donuts for a lifetime, and you feel ready to create your first big project in Blender. That's fantastic. Whether that project is making assets for a game, creating a music video, or in my case, making a short film, you are bound to learn a ton and grow tremendously as an artist while doing so. About eight months ago, I started working on a new short film in Blender. At this point, I don't want to say too much about the film, but I will say it involves this man, this woman, these locations, and it's the biggest project I've ever done. Having done other films in the past, I've learned a couple things about finishing projects in Blender, and I felt like it was my obligation to share with you what I've learned so far. So where to begin? Before you start any major project, I think one of the most beneficial things you can do for yourself is come up with a work pipeline. You hear the term pipeline a lot when it comes to large game and animation studios, but I think creating your own work pipeline is an invaluable tool for the independent artist. When I started working on my short film, I took some time to research what the standard animation pipeline was for a major 3D animation studio. Using these references, I created this pipeline for myself. Now, keep in mind, large studios have entire departments devoted to a single step on these pipelines, and you're just a single person or a small team. So you will have to do nearly every step along the way. But if we approach this in a systematic way, you can finish any project, yes, any project in a timely manner. The important thing is to create a pipeline that works with your schedule and your project. In case anyone is interested, I am right here in the process. So whatever larger project you may be working on, take some time to look into what the traditional workflow of a project like yours is. If you're making a game, look into how smaller game companies approach the game dev process. Same goes for motion graphics or animation studios. So why do we use a development pipeline? First and foremost, we are using a pipeline to remind ourselves that everything that we are doing is a part of a larger project. Your development pipeline is there to combat the artist's natural inclination to continue to polish and refine endlessly. A pipeline gives you a definitive endpoint so you can move on to the next thing, which in turn will help you finish projects quicker. An example pipeline might look something like, first you do your storyboarding, more on that later, then you're gonna do all of your modeling, so you're gonna block out your scenes, you're gonna model your environments, you're gonna model your characters. Then you're gonna do all of the texturing for your models, followed by your animating. This is also where personally I like to do cinematography. This is where I play around with the camera uh, movements, how things are gonna look. Followed by lighting your scenes, then you're going to go into the VFX stage. Um, this is where you're going to add things like particle effects, uh, little tweaks to your scene, things like physics simulations. That, that'll be handled in the VFX section. Then finally, you're going to render your scenes. After you render all of your scenes, you're going to go into post-production. This is where you're going to do things like color correction, editing. This is also typically where you're going to start doing sound. And then finally, marketing or how you're going to share your project, putting it out on YouTube or submitting it to festivals, things like that. Obviously, create a pipeline that works best for you, but really try to stick to it and don't succumb to the urge to complete every scene then move on to the next one or flip-flop back and forth on what aspect of the project you are working on. Projects with no direction take much longer to complete than projects that do, I promise. So here are some general tips for how to approach using a pipeline as well as some good reminders. When you are in the storyboarding phase or early planning phase, try and anticipate what skills you will need to finish a scene, a prop, a mechanic, anything. If you don't know what will be needed to finish it, do some research and see what others have done. This is also a good time to start stockpiling any tutorials you may need in the future. For instance, when I was planning this bathhouse scene, I knew I was gonna need volumetric fog as well as some atmospheric lighting. I didn't know exactly how to achieve this, so I spent a couple minutes looking up some lighting tutorials that were close to what I was thinking and put them in a private YouTube playlist for later. I do this for several different softwares or techniques so I can reference them easily later on. The worst thing is having to try and find a tutorial but you can't remember the title or you were on a roll and then you have to stop and find a good tutorial and it takes an additional half hour. Next up, 
Possibility is what fuels excitement, but being realistic is what finishes projects. At the beginning, dream as big as you want. Make something that's fun and exciting for you, but as the project moves along, don't be stubborn and just focus on completing it. You will have to make sacrifices and cuts along the way, but just remember it's for the greater good. Part of what makes a pipeline so useful is it gives you a good idea of the scope of your project. It allows you to gain some perspective and be realistic with yourself. A flawed completed project is better than a perfect project that just exists in your head. Finally, the best piece of advice I can really give is to just show up every day. Even if you don't know where your project will end up or even what you're making. If you show up every day and leave yourself open to the idea that something will happen, I promise, something will happen. It's like some unwritten law of the creative universe. Stay with it and sooner than you realize you'll have a completed project on your hands and you'll be asking yourself, what's next? So if you found any of this interesting and are curious to see how I've used these skills in the process of working on my short film, please subscribe and follow along. I'll be sharing what I've learned in my process in making this short film in the coming months. Also, if you've made any projects or if you have any valuable insights you've learned about your workflow, please feel free to share them below. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to sharing more in the future. Bye-bye.